Captain and Tangela too. And our host, Vincent Van Dahl. And he brings it to ya! Creature features! And all creatures! Allergies. Is it contagious? Livingston, how is this for a resume? Family Affair, My Three Sons, Green Acres, Star Trek, Charlotte's Web, The Flying Nun, Charlie Brown, The Beguiled, High Chaparral, The Brady Bunch, The Odd Couple, Night Gallery, Lassie, Bretta, Bewitch, Space Academy, and... And there's only a tiny portion of the films and television programs our guests tonight blessed with their talent, skill, and charm. Impressive. It would appear that someone spent more of their childhood in front of the camera instead of in front of a television. Indeed it does. Welcome to Creature Features. I'm your host, Vincent. Over to this side is my dutiful valet, Mr. Livingston, and the demure and delicate little beastie over to this side is my grave-digging little bantling, the spunky Miss Tangella. And do we have an incredible golden episode of the program in store for you tonight. First, let's chat about our guest. If you've seen any American movie or television program created between 1965 and 1980, you know this lovely young woman's face. For she was the most prominent and preeminent child actress for that magical string of years and has one of the most impressive IMDb resumes I have ever personally seen. She was even kissed on the face by Clint Eastwood in The Beguiled. Join us tonight will be the wonderful Pamela Ferdin. She'll tell us what it was like sitting on Captain Kirk's lap, invigorate us with tales about working with Dr. Smith at Space Academy, and relay what Rod Serling was really like when he wasn't frightening us all with the Night Gallery. All while we chat about her appearance in tonight's movie, which is Daughter of the Mind. Have you seen it, Livingston? Of course. I'm compelled to screen every movie you intend to air. He can edit out whatever he thinks is inappropriate. Nevertheless, I do not now, nor have I ever intentionally selected films which feature exposed bosoms. Onward. Daughter of the Mind is a fabulous ghost story that stars Ray Milland, Gene Tierney, Ed Asner, and of course, our guest, Pamela. It centers around a man who is continuously visited by his recently deceased daughter. This wonderful tale of a wandering spirit causes quite a stir amongst younger viewers at the time it was released in 1969. Tangella says that while the movie has some clever ploys and compelling effects, it's not scary at all, and only tiny babies in diapers could be frightened by it. Right. In any case, let's get right to it, and don't you dare go away, because it shall be another night of ghostly haunted house fright right here on Creature Features. <coughs> Stay tuned. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. This brief moment of tranquility has been brought to you by Nightscape. Relax and sleep better every single night with this and other videos from our free YouTube channel. Learn more by visiting nightscape.co today.
Welcome to Creature Features. This is going to be a wonderful night. You know why? Because we've got Pamela in third in, and we're going to share one of the films. Hi, Pamela. Hello. How was the trip up? <laughs> it was great, and this mansion is beautiful. You know, I hear that all the time, but you know, I think it's a bit musty. Oh, I think it's and, wonderful. And the ghosts, there's ghosts in this place. <laughs> oh, there Unlike are? your ghost in this film, <laughs> she's a ghost in this film. No, she's a child ghost. I, I, I find child ghosts to be the most frightening. Yes, I was, I was killed and I came back. Right. To ask my father. You cannot spoil the film. <laughs> no, we're, gonna, we're about to start the film. She wants to give you spoilers already. <laughs> now, you're going to tell us how they did the special effects. You like special effects. Oh. You've I... been in so many things with special effects. Yes. Space Academy. Yeah. She knows Dr. Smith, or she knew him. <laughs> yes. Did... And he was a he was a larger than life character in real life. He was just like that in real life, I he understand. He was just like that. My goodness. You, you know, know, because he was on we Broadway. We had the robot right where you're sitting. Right oh, there. seriously? We had the robot. No, and you know, Tangela, you haven't met her yet, but he tried to pinch Tangela with his pinchy things. <laughs> True story. No, no, no. She offended him. <laughs> okay. I mean, imagine what, what kind of talent it takes to offend an actual robot. <laughs> so anyways, I, I digress. Uh, we're going to watch this film. Anything we should watch for in the beginning? Well, <clears throat> a car goes through me <gasps> when I'm away in the middle of the road. All right. But I just want to, well, maybe I should tell you Let's after how it back. was done. How Watch it was for done. this scene because she's yes. going to explain how it was done, right? Yes. yes. And I take it a car did not actually go through you. It almost did. Almost did. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> All right. So we're going to start this film and when we come back, uh, Pamela is going to tell us how she almost died. <laughs> making this film you're going to watch tonight so don't go away and uh you stay there i'm going to stay here and if if you leave hurry back bye Professor, Professor Constable, it's almost 6.30, it's closing time. What? It's closing time. Oh, I see. I guess I lose track of time here. Mary? Daddy! Mary, where are you? In front of you. Look! Mary! so much. I've got to 
to go now? No, Mary. They're calling me back. Mary, wait. Oh, Daddy. I hate being dead. Mary. is to try to learn to be comfortable with all that junk on. I want you to try to sleep normally and dream normally. Alex. Okay? I want you to do something for me. Something important. I'll finish up here for you. Well, can't it wait, Frank? No, it's for one of my oldest friends. Professor Constable. Constable? The man who wrote all those books on the mathematics of cybernetics. Samuel Hale, Constable? Yes, he's, he's had some sort of a psychic experience. Sounded very upset. And I told him I'd ask you to talk with him. Well, if Samuel Hale, Constable, has had a psychic experience, it must be a Lulu. <laughs> Dr. Ferguson will take over for today. I'll see you tomorrow, same time. Alex Lauer. Professor Constable is expecting me. Oh, yeah. Come in, please. Thank you. This way. Dr. Lauder, in your professional opinion, are there such things as ghosts? Many very intelligent people believe that there are. What do you believe? Well, I have an open mind about it. We've done some research on phenomena, spiritual visitations. It's hard to know what name to give them. Why? Maybe I should be visiting an analyst or in a sanitarium. 
But I saw and heard what I think is, what I'm sure is, my daughter, who was killed in an automobile accident 13 weeks ago. Professor, my basic field is extrasensory perception, not spiritual phenomena. Dr. Lauda, I heard her. I saw her. Now, if I'm hallucinating, I must know it and go for treatment immediately. If I'm not, my God, if I'm not. Well, when did you first become aware of these phenomena? It started two weeks ago. I, I heard or, or thought I heard her calling me. And then I noticed some things in her room had been moved, changed around. Although since the accident, no one's been allowed in there. I've kept the room locked. Somehow, I couldn't quite face removing her toys and her clothes, removing the last vestiges of Mary's existence. Anyhow, there's a small play table in her room. And I remember, on her last morning, how she put the turkey in front of the stuffed squirrel. And she insisted on giving the alligator to the teddy bear. Now eat your alligator. It's very good for you. And it's a splendid source of vitamin C. Professor? Professor Constable? Yes. Would you like to show me what's been moved? Well, as you can see, the alligator's now in front of the squirrel and the turkey's in front of the teddy bear. That's not the way she left it. This is Mary? Yes. My wife, Lenore, used to sculpt until she became arthritic. She was doing that wax of Mary and had to stop suddenly about a year ago. The hands became too stiff. But I wouldn't have bothered you if it was just a case of toys being moved. But last night, there was an appearance. I saw Mary and spoke to her. I wrote an account of it in as much detail as I could remember. It's all in here. It was on the way back from the cemetery. I heard her voice. I looked up and she appeared in the road ahead of me. I reached out for her. I almost touched her. And then she said, Daddy, Daddy, I hate being dead. And then she disappeared. Dr. Lauder, will you help me? Will you investigate? Oh, I'd be very happy to. But I'm afraid it's going to have to wait until I return from Switzerland. Switzerland? Yes, I have to address an international conference on parapsychology. I'll only be gone five days, though. Five days? Five days of not knowing whether well, I'm safe Well, I don't have to leave or... until tomorrow night. Meanwhile, let's just poke around a little bit. I'd like to meet the rest of the household. Uh, shall we start with your wife? Thank you. Welcome back to Creature Features. If you're just joining us, you're quite tardy, and I, I don't know if we should allow them to stay. All right, you can stay. We are with Pamela Ferdin, who is in this film, and you just saw one of the most amazing scenes. Yeah, no, that whole thing where you go, Daddy, I hate being dead. I mean, that's the worst thing a, a child could ever say to their parent, right? I know. Let me hear you do it. Do it, do it. Daddy, I hate being dead. 
You, she did exactly <laughs> as she did in the film. How many times did you have to do that? <laughs> not, not very many. Because you were so good. Yes. Right, you're a professional. I so, so uh, you were saying before the break, in that scene, that uh, you had to like do well, the whole they, through the car thing. The director put me in the middle of the road. Right. Um, it was in a park, so there was no traffic. Right. But I was still in the middle of the road. Right. And they had a uh, driver, a championship fast driver, whose name I can't remember, but he ran the car fast and he stopped three feet in front of me. And I didn't even know what was happening. I just was told to stand in oh the middle of goodness. the street and go, Daddy, Daddy. And this car <laughs> comes at me. They I am going so it. fast. But he stopped three feet in front of me. And boy, I was, I was scared then. You could have died. <laughs> no, he was a good driver. No, he was a no, professional car driver. what if there was like driver. a mechanical failure with a brake? Or if, <laughs> what, if, what if there was a ghost up there who did not like the fact that you were making a ghost film in his ghost land and decided to cut the brakes himself? <laughs> I would not be sitting here with Pamela and Ferdin. And we'd be watching some other movie like Night of the Living Dead for the umpteenth time. <laughs> and then, of course, they moved the car behind me. And then it went that way. Now, I don't understand so, how they did the effect. Did they, like... I don't know exactly they did not have how CGI they did that then. effect. Now, well, they did not have, like, the whole computer graphic Star Wars thing back then. No, oh, yeah. they did not. 1969. So it, was, it was a great movie of the week to be in because Ray Meland and Gene Tierney, I mean... They're superstars. like icons, right. superstars, and right. they played my parents. And it was interesting to me because I was only 10 years old, and they were older parents. Right. And they did that specifically um, because Gene Tierney at the time was getting on in years. Right. And so was Ray Milland. Indeed. But they had a 10-year-old child, and that was me. And, um, and they actually mention it in the script later. They say, oh, we had a late 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 childhood or late parenthood but to work with ray Milland and gene tierney what was he like he was, he was wonderful he he was just great and gene tierney oh my gosh what an icon what right. a gorgeous actress and you know that was the last thing she ever did no yes oh my goodness what did she do after that she just died or? i don't know I, but no more know. movies I don't know. I, I think she just retired. Good for her. Yeah. She worked yeah, a lot. Right. She deserved to retire. She did some major films, major films. All right, what do you say we get back to this film, see what happens next, and when we come back, we have to talk about some of the other many things you did. The list is too long. I don't know where to begin. So we're going to start with your favorite, right? Oh, I have so many favorites. All right, we're going to start with your top favorite. <laughs> but first, let's get back to the film. All right, you stay there. You guys stay there, and uh, we'll see you on the other side of the break. Mary was a wonderful, remarkable child, but she's dead and gone. My husband has to learn to face that bitter, bitter fact, as I have had to. Then you don't believe that he really saw Mary's spirit last night? You're a trained psychologist. You know he didn't. You think he imagined it? My husband needs psychiatric treatment, and I'm grateful that you're here to help him realize it. Mrs. Constable, there have been reports of spiritual visitations that just can't be explained in terms of our present scientific knowledge. But assuming for a moment that these phenomena are real, what do you think might be causing them? Dr. Lauder, I've forgotten what causes snowflakes, but I know it's not a snow fairy. Well, in my line of work, we have to keep an open mind about snow fairies, and a very open mind as to whether the human spirit might act Come in. Good morning. This is Dr. Paul Kreider, a great healer. I am an OK chiropractor with a great patient. I'm pleased to meet you, Doctor. Pleasure. Dr. Lauder is here to look into what Sam thinks he's been seeing. Miss Gossibles told me how much you've helped her arthritis in this past year. Actually, it is more my daughter, Tina, more the hydrotherapy. But the important thing is Lenore's getting better. Give me your hand. 
Excuse me, doctor, I don't want to interrupt your treatment, but have you or your daughter noticed anything unusual in the house that could help account for Professor Constable's experiences? No, I haven't. But then I pop in and out too fast. Maybe Tina can help you. She spends a great deal of time here. And I think you'd enjoy talking to her. She's very attractive. Well, then I'm sure I will. One question. Are Professor Constable's visits to the cemetery on a fairly regular schedule? Regular and too often. Three or four times a week. We've tried all of us to dissuade him. Mrs. Constable, your husband and Mary were closer than most father and daughters. At least I've gotten that impression. Yes, you see, Mary was an only child and born late in our lives. Soon after that, I became ill and couldn't be as active in Mary's life as Sam was. I suppose in that sense, her death has been a worse blow to him than to me. Then, too, he was driving the car and feels that if he hadn't been overtired, perhaps his reactions would have been faster and Mary would still be with us. Guilt is a terrible and powerful thing. Are you suggesting, in a very gentle way, of course, that perhaps your husband might be causing these things to happen himself without knowing it? Well, haven't psychic phenomena sometimes been explained that way? Self-delusion, unhappy people so desperately wanting to believe that they unconsciously tamper with facts? Well, that's a possibility, yes. But my job is to investigate, not to speculate. Doctor, where might I find your daughter this morning? giving hydrotherapy instruction at Morningside Center. I will call her. Good, thank you. Miss Constable, Dr. Kreider, I look forward to talking to you both soon again. Dr. Lauder, you do understand what I was trying to say about Sam, don't you? Poor man. He wants so badly the dead not to be dead. Well, I understand. Really, I do. Frank, how long have you known Professor Constable? Oh, well, we've been close friends for 20 years. Why? Has he ever been in the habit of taking medication regularly? Never. Not even since the accident. Matter of fact, just the opposite. He's always had the feeling or, or been afraid that medication of any kind might dull the mind. Okay. Now, have you ever noticed any neurotic behavior, irrationality, instability? No. He's the most logical and rational man I've ever known. That is, up until three months ago when Mary died. Alex, what are you trying to say? Well, either the professor is on the verge of a complete nervous breakdown, or what he says he saw is true. And if it is, this might be the first observable and provable instance of communication between the living and the dead in the history of mankind. Alex, you, you don't really believe. If I hadn't believed that were possible, I wouldn't take up parapsychology as a life's work. But parapsychology and spiritualism are two quite different fields. Are they? I don't know. Every day in the laboratory, I see things that I just can't explain. You ask me to help, and I'm going to try. I want to move into the constable house. If any more of these phenomena occur, I want to be there. Move into the house? For how long? What about Switzerland? The time being, Switzerland's going to have to wait. You know the house, everybody in it? Oh, sure do. We've been treating Lenore for over a year. Dr. Ladder, is there... Could there be anything to all this without Mary coming back? Or did the accident and everything sort of blow the old man's mind? Oh, um, all right, that's enough for today. Let's get some coffee. Well, could there be anything to it? Well, might be. 
at least we have a detailed observation of a possible psychic phenomenon from a very sophisticated and scientific mind. You think it could be true? Why is that such a shock? Well, I mean, wow. If Mary could come back. Yes? If Mary could come back, then anyone could. Even my mother, whom I never treated right. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome back to the show. Miss Pamelin had to step out for a moment. I, you know, I think she went out to get a dog. Yeah, right. So they could compare paws. That would be something that two dog owners would do, right? No. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, I don't own a dog personally, so I don't know these things. We have dogs on the property. Well, that does not make them mine. They're hers. And we've got Fang with us now, and he's, he's eating cheese, if you're wondering, because she normally gives him, like, healthy food, and I give him cheese. So to keep him quiet, she's feeding him cheese tonight, which is nice, right? Right? Right. I, I, I live with two grumpy people. This one's more grumpy than the other one. But uh, let's do mail, right? Let us do that. Let's do some mail. What do we got? St. Paul, Minnesota. St. Paul, Minnesota. Have you ever been to St. Paul? I have not. I hear. It's quite cold in the winter. I've never been. All right. This is from Tammy Dreheim. We've heard from Tammy before, right? Tammy with an I. I don't this think Tammy so. with an eye. St. Paul, Minnesota, maybe not. Uh, hi, Vincent Tangella and Livingston. I watch you three, Andrew, and the guests on YouTube since Halloween night 2021. Maybe we have not. Uh, found you there. Love the show. Way better than Elvira and Sven Gulli. No offense to them. Wow. We've never been given that compliment before. Better than Sven Gulli and Elvira? I, I think their opinion would differ, but I will take it. Uh, way funnier with you three than the other programs I spoke of. I grew up watching Mystery Science Theater 3000. Sure, the older years of that show is funny, but you guys are way better. Love, Tammy, Dreheim, St. Paul, Minnesota. Well, that's awfully nice of you to say, Tammy. Although, you know, I think a few viewers of those programs would beg to differ, right? Perhaps. Perhaps. All right, thanks for writing. Next up, Mr. Livingston. I don't see a name on this. There's no name. It's got to be a name. My name is Rick. That's the first thing he says. And oh, there's some artwork with it as well. He goes, uh, greetings, Vincent, Livingston, and Tangella. My name is Rick. I'm a retired diner owner cook. I've been jumping through my butt for almost 40 years. How does one do that? Very slowly. Jumping through my butt for almost 40 years. I've never heard this term before. It's a figure of speech. It's an American figure of speech. Yes. Oh. We don't we don't say that in the UK, but you know I like it. Maybe maybe we should bring it to the UK. No. I can see the Queen saying that. Oi! I jumped through my butt. No, I could I could completely see the Queen saying this. All right. And suddenly, completely for health reasons, suddenly nothing to do and not able to be in the cold, I've been staying home. I decided to follow my lifelong dream to be an artist. So I taught myself how to draw on the iPad. What's an iPad? I'll explain it to you later. Is this something you put on your eye? No, it is not. You know, he's, he's like the Encyclopedia Britannica for mean people. Or something like that. 
Uh, let's see. Creature Features has been a very significant part of the process. I turn your show on YouTube, and then it just continues to stream all day while I'm drawing. Well, I, I don't know how inspirational that might be. I mean, we share some pretty ghastly things. This, this man may turn into like a horror artist of some kind. There's too many of those. We need, we need more Disney-like cartoonists. Right? Read further. All right, all right. Uh, I turn your show on YouTube and then just continue to stream all day while I'm drawing. I do love that the instant I decide to draw you, I watch TV, take pictures of what I'm watching, and do drawings based on them. Tangela screams twice. Yeah, she only does that for fun. She never does it because she's really scared. I dig your show. You guys have a terrific chemistry, the perfect cast for the show. I really want to believe you all live together in Bodega Bay and really go out for Chinese brilliant stuff. Um, we don't actually live in Bodega Bay. We are like a half a mile from the border of Bodega Bay. Everyone calls it Bodega Bay, but technically we're just like in the county, right? Bodega Bay is not a county. Well, no, but I mean, Bodega Bay is the closest city to us, but technically we are outside of city limits. Ah, I see what you're saying. Bodega Bay, right? So, one request, attack of the 50-foot woman. Yeah, we, we've gotten calls on this one. I don't think we can get it, right, Tom? We'll give it a shot, all right. And uh, here's a portrait he made of us. We're going to put a bigger one up. And this is actually fairly accurate. He's a, look, look how good of an artist this man is. And this is one of those nights that you wore glasses and then your beard was grayer. And you're wearing a red button instead of a white button. Anyways, thank you so much, Rick. We appreciate it. And keep up the good, fine artwork. Last up, Mr. Livingston. We have a gift. Ah, a box. You know, since she's holding the dog. I think you better open the I'm box. I'm going to have I. you pull the item out when the time is appropriate. Very well. This is from Kerry Horrigan. Horrigan. I don't know how to say your last name, Kerry. Uh, I create these while I watch your program. And they have a picture of this robot lady. And these monster things. Maybe we can put a big one up. And uh, thank you for the entertainment. I figure you can all sign it and put it on eBay if nothing else. All right, so let's show what this person made. Oh, that's incredible. Look at this. There's Bob. He seems to be mounted on a s s film canister. It's a film canister. And can it's a nutcracker. A nutcracker. And there's Tangela's head. And then your head and mine. No, that's a lovely portrayal of us. We're going to have to... Let's put that down so we can get a close-up of that. Uh, I create these. Uh, also, Dee wants to come hang out with all of you. She will just sit there and stare at you. That is... This is D. Right? And um, I have to keep a blanket over her. She weirds me out staring at me all the time. No exception is when Creature Features is on, she's got the hots for Livingston. D has odds for you. Yeah. She looks like a nice lady. Thank you all again, Carrie Horrigan. At, uh, where are you, Carrie? P.S. If you just like the way you look or present in a sculpture, you're welcome to take a hammer to it. No, definitely not. This shall go in a place of honor where it deserves to be. Thank you so much for the uh, kind gift and the kind words, Carrie. Is that it? That's it. That is it for mail. If you'd like to send us email, send it to the address you see over here. Or if you'd like to send us a wonderful sculpture handmade by you, send it in the post to this address. We'll be back uh, soon with Pamela, but first let's get back to Daughter of the Mind. Alex, you wake. 
Yes. Yes, I'm awake. Well, there's something. I heard something. You better come up here. Right away. calling from the hall or perhaps from in here maybe it was a dream Things? But Mary, I work for a private foundation. I... Mary? Mary, are you still here? She was here. Really here. You saw her. You heard her. Says you are not hallucinating. Oh, my God.
CIC, Special Agent Saul Wiener. Counterintelligence Corps. <laughs> what am I suspected of, burning my draft card? We're anxious to get a look at that wax impression of the little girl's tooth. He is doing war work. You've got the house bugged. You're pretty quick. Wait a minute. The CIC isn't causing these appearances of his daughter, is it? You bet it isn't. We'd like to know who is. Uh, have you got that tooth impression with you? I'm taking it down in my lab along with the voice recordings. We've got a pretty good lab. Why don't you try ours? Is that an invitation or a command? Invitation. Okay. Dr. Lauder, I'm uh, sorry about the hour and the inconvenience we've caused you. I offer two words in explanation. National security. Well, those are very impressive words. My name is Augstadt. I'm a major general in the United States Army. Sir. So, general, what's this all about? Well, in certain cases involving the national defense, counterintelligence has given wide discretion in the use of wiretapping and other electronic devices. Such discretion was availed here. Now, what's this nonsense about constables communicating with his dead daughter? Have you ever considered the possibility that it might be just what he believes it is? Ghosts? General, if we were in my office, I could get from the files a list of distinguished scientists, philosophers, statesmen, even generals, who are willing to at least admit the possibility of communicating with the dead. Oh, somebody's communicating with Professor Constable, all right. Somebody from the other side, all right. The other side in the Cold War. They're experts at defections and subversion. They use prostitutes, kidnapping, blackmail, phony morality, religion. It doesn't surprise me a bit that they'd use a decent man's grief and guilt over the death of his daughter. Do you know that after the accident, when Constable was in the hospital, he talked to his dead daughter almost steadily for four whole days while he was unconscious? His wife told me that, yes. We think that somebody from the other side used this as an idea as to how to brainwash him. They want to stop Constable from doing any more work on uh, what he's been doing. Maybe they'll try to go all the way, get him to defect. Samuel Hale Constable defect? Samuel Hale Constable believe in ghosts? Well, why don't you just go to him then? Surround him with police, special agents. We want to catch whoever's doing this, Dr. Lauder. And whoever it is, is obviously very close to Professor Constable. I see. He told me tonight he was working for a private foundation. Yes. His work is very theoretical, and he is working for a private foundation. However, we also endow that foundation. Professor Constable's field is cybernetics, the science of communicating with computers. Submarines, missiles, even artillery are steered by computers. Mm. You know the thing about this case? There didn't seem to be any profit motive. There was no medium, no spiritualist, nobody with anything to gain. Have you checked the house for microphones or amplifiers other than your own? Yes, nothing. But access to the house is hard for us. So how about you doing it again? I can lend you a bug detector. Do you know how to use one? Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by the Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. Welcome back to Creature Features. We are with the wonderful Pamela Fedden. You are an actress, a voice actress. You um, have trained in the medical field. You do work for animal rights. And uh, well, what did I miss? I think you got it all. Well, you're the ghost Isn't in this movie. Enough? You're a ghost. <laughs> so you should put that on your resume as well. 
right? Ghost. Yes, yes, I was a ghost. I can That's ghost. That's true. Yes. Right? And in this film, no, no, that, that, the way you'd go, Daddy, that's so spooky. I know. Even I was afraid. When I saw it on television, I'm serious. I was scared. You and were scared I, and of I yourself. Did it. Yes, I was scared. That How can movie that scared the living daylights out of me, and I was in it. No, well, that, that's, that's, that's a good scary sign. It is. No, 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 no. There's, there's, there's been things that I've done where it's like, oh, this, I wouldn't be scared of this, and I listen to it later. It's like, oh, my goodness. How did I make such a scary sound? No, so I, and, I can see that. And I think Daughter of the Mind, that's why so many people love that movie and remember that movie because they were young and they were scared. Right. And they just remember it. Right. I get so many letters from from people saying, still. oh, still saying, I loved you in Daughter of the Mind. Right. And I think that was such a great movie. And oh, no, it's so. a wonderful film. I saw it when I was young, and there's a scene coming up which stuck in my head. I completely forgot about it until I reviewed the film again. And it's like, oh my goodness, I remember this when I was young and it frightened me. It's coming up, you'll see it soon. You know what I'm talking about, I think. Anyways, <laughs> let's talk about other things. You've done so many things. What is the one thing that stands out of all the things you've done oh my as goodness. your favorite? I know it's hard so to choose, but you gotta hard. pick one. Oh my goodness gracious. I think it was um, a tie between Star Trek and The Odd Couple. The Odd Couple, you played Edna? Edna Unger, Tony Edna Randall's Unger. daughter. Right. And that was such a great cast. I mean, Jack Klugman, Tony right. Randall, and they were exactly like their characters. And I mean, hugely popular program. Oh, it was great. Right. It was, and I, I I just, I felt like I was truly Tony Randall's daughter. And she was supposed to be a lot like him, and right. I was. I was very finicky, like, like right. Tony Randall. Right. And, and um, uh, Felix, he's, they were just wonderful right. to work with. Now, what was, what was uh, Tony Randall like in real life? He would sing opera you know we we um filmed before a live audience right so on monday we would have a um a rehearsal and we would read the script and then we would block it and by friday we were doing it in front of a live audience right and um jack klugman would come in in jeans and he'd bring bagels and he was wearing casual clothes just like just like he was in the in the series right, right. and um tony randall was always in a coat and tie and he would sing opera uh, so just like the real characters just like the real characters oh, goodness. Wow. now and doing then, the live part was that difficult for you well it it definitely was uh, uh it was definitely different right. from being um, on a set right. with just one camera right. because then you do the close up and mm. the two shot right. whereas this you you went through the whole show and i think it was a little bit difficult for me at first because you had to you had to be loud enough and expressive enough for the actual audience to hear you right. but yet you couldn't overdo it for the television audience. Right. So it was that fine line right. between doing too much and too little. It was it was a challenge. It's, I liked it's it. A, it's a tough way. But I imagine it's wonderful for an actor to, to be put into that position where not only are you in front of an audience and in front of a camera, but you're in front of an audience and a camera. Right. That's like double duty. Right. And right. the audience, when they laugh, when they're right there laughing right. at you, it, it definitely it helps is. The performance, it, right? It's it's right. great for your performance. All right. Well, speaking of performance, what do you say we get back to this film? And when we come back, I want you to tell me everything about this whole kiss with Clint Eastwood. <laughs> and Star Trek. And Star Trek. But I want to hear the Clint Eastwood one first. <laughs> okay. All right. Off we go. Back to Daughter of the Mind. Some good stuff coming up. Don't go away. I've been taken advantage of, and I resent it very, very much. You must have known I turned down office to work for the Air Force and the Space Administration. I believe the military of the world have grisly enough weapons without science adding to the arsenals. 
This country may have to spend 12 billions on an anti-ballistic missile system. 12 billion. Is there a cheaper, more efficient defense? Is there a way to reprogram enemy missiles while they're in the air and send them harmlessly into the sea? It seems to us that some of your recent theoretical work suggests that there is. Sending them harmlessly into the sea. Or perhaps back where they came from? Million ton boomerangs? Perhaps. I'm not only in war work, but I'm at the most critical possible end of it. Missiles. I suppose subconsciously I knew my work could have military application. But I never really faced it. Not until last night. What happened last night? Who told you? No one under your jurisdiction. I've known her since she was born. That's how long I've been here. That's her little voice. Thank you, Helga. I got one thing to say. She was a wonderful little girl. Bright and, and loving. I mean to say, if God was going to choose somebody to come back, he'd choose Mary. Looks like he's getting close to our bud. Hey, here's something in the window molding. Looks like a hat pin. It's fantastic. Is that yours? Well, that about covers it. Seems to be the only bug in the room. If there's no spook equipment in that room, then someone has to be bringing it in before each phenomenon and taking it out afterwards. But no one's gone in or out of that house except our electrician, Professor Constable, Helga, Dr. Lauder, Dr. Ferguson, the chiropractor and his daughter. Until now. selling magazines. Hello. 
Is this the residence of Professor and Mrs. Samuel Hale Constable? Yeah. Was there a death in the family in the last few months? A little girl? Yeah. My wife has a message from the child for her father and mother. Mary. From Mary. May we come in, please? Mrs. is in. Then, as I understand it, Mr. Bessmer, your wife is what is usually referred to as a medium? I guess that's the word. She receives these thought things somehow. Sometimes she says them in German, sometimes in English. She must be quite a linguist. Well, actually, not at all. She doesn't understand any German, and I'm teaching her English. Mr. Bessman, what was the message that Mary had for her mother and father? Well, what Debbie told... She thinks we ought to wait until the mother and the father are both present. Oh, I see. Tell me, is she a professional? Does she accept contributions? Oh, no, never. I have a recording company. It does fine. This is just for love of fellow man. They tested her at the University of London. Tests in ESP and... Well, you probably know the kind. They said she was a true sensitive, whatever that means. Means she can't help getting these messages, I guess. I don't suppose she'd mind my testing her extrasensory perception, would she? Cartoon or test logi? She doesn't mind. Fine. I've got some cars that were developed especially for testing ESP. All right, what's this one? Uh, circle. How's she doing? I'll give you a score in a minute. All right. Goloka. Circle. Goloka Tara Otoko. Circle, star, and square. Tried to trip her up that time, eh, Dr. Lauder? This is Professor Constable, Mr. and Mrs. Bessner. I'm grateful to you for coming to see us. What is the message from our daughter? Well, she says that those around her, forces around her, make it difficult for her to come to you. So Mary asked Debbie here if she would help her get through to you, which Debbie is glad to do. She's been helpful to others. I see. Well, how can this be arranged? How soon? Well, the more minds thinking hard, the easier it is to bring a spirit across. Get six, seven, up to a dozen people together and we'll try it. Maybe tonight. Mr. Bessman, why don't we use my laboratory at the university? We have perfect control there. Sure, sounds okay. Well, wouldn't it be better for Mary to be in her own room, in her own house? Ask her. It would be easier here. I see. Well, would you excuse us for a moment? Alex? Alex, I know for your purposes the university would be preferable. But I must keep in mind what is best for Mary. Alex, I want to tell you something. Something I learned just a few hours ago in Washington. Mary's spirit knew something I didn't know or at least wouldn't admit to myself. No one knew, except a few defense officials at the Pentagon. It was just as Mary said. I've been up to my neck in war work and have been for the last two years almost. Alex, I know I'm less objective in this matter than you are, but I'm no less a scientist. I regard Mary's appearances as proven. Sir, I'd like to believe as much as you would. But the history of psychic investigation is one of hope after hope being dashed. I'm afraid the scientific community is going to require more proof. In fact, so will I. Haven't you ever wondered why man's great discoveries happen when they do? 
Fire existed long before we did. Why do you suppose that at a certain specific moment, man found it to be usable? Blood was circulating long before Harvey discovered that it was. And do you suppose that now that we have the ability to destroy the world, we're going to be given the understanding and the wisdom not to? I hope so. But I don't know, sir. What do your tests indicate about Mrs. Besmer? Well, I suppose I've given that test or seen it given at least two, three thousand times. Of all the subjects I've seen tested, this woman is overwhelmingly the best. Yes, they wouldn't send an untalented medium, would they? They? The spirits, or whoever it is Mary is among. Sir, please keep in mind, a high score on the Zener cards doesn't have much to do with communicating with the dead. It indicates a high degree of psychic sensitivity, and that's all. Unless Mary is helping her as a way of bringing me to belief. Yeah, this is Rick. I'm over here in East Providence, Rhode Island. Love your show. I watch it all the time. I wish I could see it when it's on the television. I watch it on YouTube. Anyway, I think you guys are really good. Keep up the good work. Bye. Hello, this is Livingston. Apparently, one of my newly acquired domestic duties is to request help for our show financially by asking you to visit our patron page. Your generosity will help keep Creature Features on the air, which I'm not entirely sure is a good thing. However, with only a few dollars a month from you, your kindness will allow us to continue creating new programming each week, which apparently some of you curiously enjoy. And should you have the desire to give even more, you might even receive a gift from Ms. Tangella. I think not. Please visit the website below to learn more. Thank you. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by... The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. Who does your hair? I have a very, very nice gal who does it. But the curls... Will she come work for me? <laughs> no, I like your style. I think I should switch. <laughs> the curls are definitely mine. And... They are lovely curls. Uh, I didn't think they were so lovely when I was young. No, they're lovely now. So, so they I, would straighten your hair. So I would iron my hair. With an iron. With an iron. On an ironing board, that I would do cruel. this. sounds cool. My goodness. Because <laughs> so I, wanted, I wanted straight hair like yours. But now I'm happy with my curly I, I hair. I use a special device. You no, my, mine's wavy. I, I can predict the weather with my hair. <laughs> no, no, no. If, if it's going to rain, my hair curls up like yours. Yes. And if it's going to be windy, my hair blows. But that's because I'm standing outside in the wind. So I suppose it's not predictive. However... <laughs> this film, there's a statue of you, a bust. Right, right. Where is it? Oh, gosh, I wish I knew. I yeah, wish I had somebody, that bust. No, but somebody out there has they, it. They did it by uh, laying me down on a table. No. And they, would, they created a mold, and I had a little straw to they breathe through. They cast your face. And they cast my face. Well, in that bust, you have like a nice smile. Did they say smile with this? <laughs> You poor yes. thing. You're yes. 10 years old going through torture. This is this like being waterboarded, right? No, no it's not no. like being waterboarded. Oh, that's terrible. It must have been a nightmare. You're not claustrophobic, I take it. No, no. Mm -hmm. I couldn't have been with that. Yeah. Well, no, it's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing. It's too bad somebody did not. They should have given it to you. 
Right. Oh, I wish. Well, you know, I think I think we should have a search for the bus, the missing bus. Like, you know, it could be like a national challenge, right? If you know the location of that bus, write to Creature Features, and then we're going to have a campaign to get it back to Pamela and Ferdin. Oh, that would be great. No, it's her but, face. Uh, but I hate to say it. I think it was wax, and so I don't think it's around anymore. Oh, somebody turned into a giant candle and melted your head. <laughs> that would be terrible. All right, I want to talk about these, uh, these, these kisses you endured as a child. One from Clint Eastwood. This was in the script that he kisses you. It wasn't in the script. Oh, it was not? No, and in yeah. fact, I don't think it would be allowed today. Oh, definitely not. I really think it you was... You were how old when this happened? I think I was about 12. 12. And he, was, or 12. he was 14 or 15 at and least, <laughs> right? And he wanted to keep me quiet right. because he didn't want the Confederates to find him. No, this nobody during, wants the Confederates to find you. This, this was during the Civil War. Right. And he was fighting for the Union Army. And so a Confederate wagon with men were going by, and he thought that I'd yell out. And so instead of covering my mouth like that, right. which the script had, right. him covering my mouth, he kissed me right on the lips. And so they used that in the film. They used that, and I remember... And the look of shock is genuine. And, the sh and I was like... <laughs> I just goodness. couldn't believe it. Wow. And it was great. It was really great. So, so everywhere you go, women are saying, oh, you're so lucky that Clint Eastwood kissed your face <laughs> instead of dying from the Confederates, right? I was too young, unfortunately, to right. appreciate it. Right. <laughs> no, I, I suppose. No, so that's not the only one. You also had a kiss from William Shatner. Well, William Shatner, he, I just had the worst crush on him. And I would follow him all around, and I would watch him film his scenes, and he knew I had a crush on him. Right. And I think he was just so sweet about it that he thought, you know, I should give Pammy a little ring and ask her to marry me. How and sweet. so he did. He said, we should get married. And I said, yay, yay, yippee. And so he gave me a cigar band. And so now you're officially wed. Do you think you could talk to him and get him to come on, on my show? No, um, he's refused every invitation well, I've given that's him. That's not nice. I, I, I'm, I'm, I understand he does not like my music. Oh, mm. really? I don't think I so. I think as his wife, you might be able to convince him. Well, I... I give it a try. I, if I that's, knew how to get a hold of him, I would give uh, it a try. He's one of them type of husbands, eh? <laughs> he's, a, he's, he's like, uh, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's a flight risk. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose he would be if he if he flies on the Enterprise and now he flew on this other thing. I know. Did you see that? He went into space. I know. And isn't he 90 years old? No. Ooh. Captain uh, Kirk, I don't think, has ever passed 60. Uh, I, I think, could be wrong. I think he's 90. He's and he 90? looks good. 90. Well, that's a long time. All right. What do you say we get back to this film? Good. All right. Off we go. Back to Daughter of the Minds. And when we come back, uh, I, I, I've got a question I want to ask you about something neat. I can't remember it, but I'll remember it after the break. So, see you soon. Would you all put your chairs in a circle around Debbie here? About time we're starving. Yes, sir. Go ahead, General. Preliminary report through British CID has them uh, as uh, Arnold Watson Bessmer and his wife Debbie Harinda Vishala Bessmer married in Delhi, India, August 29th. Seems legitimate. According to the newspaper files, she cooperated with the New Delhi police in solving a couple of crimes. I wish you'd give me a little help. Don't we all? 
He was born in Lancashire and... Hold it, General. I think the seance is starting. All right, everybody, can I have your attention, please? Debbie needs quiet. Now, she needs dark as well as quiet and positive thoughts. Uh, would you help turn off the lights, please, Dr. Lauder? I'll be happy to. Dr. Lauder and Dr. Ferguson here are both scientists, which is to say, professional skeptics. Now, will their presence here disturb Debbie or Mary? No, sir, I don't think so. If they'll just do their bit by thinking of Mary as hard as they can. Those that knew her, remember what she looked like, sounded like. The rest of us, let's look at her belongings in this room and think about what she must have been like in this life. I remember Mary very well indeed. You were at her christening, Frank. You... I suppose we're to close our eyes. Oh, no, no. Just sit still and hold tight onto each other's hands. Mr. Bessman, do you mind if I take some photographs? I have some infrared film here. It doesn't make any flash or anything, but there's a slight clicking sound. Well, that's okay. Uh, but please stay behind the others. Well, I'm fine back here. All right. Shall we hold on to each other's hands? Mr. Bessmer? Arnold, please, Alex. Arnold, uh, if we were doing this in my laboratory, I'd tie Debbie down to the chair with a little bit of thread. You think she'd mind? That don't look like it's very strong. <laughs> That's just the point. You see, if she were to move around or get up, the thread would break or entangle. She doesn't move around, does she? No, she doesn't. Go right ahead. Thank you. Pardon me. Don't worry. Debbie always makes that sound when she's going into a trance. She'll be okay. Mother's here too. Mary. Daddy. They say. They say I can never come again unless you stop what you're doing. I will, Mary. I will stop. Tell them that. Mary? Mary, are you still here? for melting wax. Something's going on. Now, take it easy, friends. Help Mary by keeping her in your minds. Daddy. Mommy. I love you. Daddy. They say you are your brother's keeper. Goodbye. Please, don't, don't forget me. Don't forget me. 
forget. Don't forget. Lights, please, Alex. Right away. Thread all in order? Seems to be, yes. Alex, if I see what you see, she stuck a hand in the melted wax and then into the water. Well, seems to have. are in our top security file, along with the professors and Mrs. Constables. Those are definitely Mary Constable's fingerprints inside the wax hand. Wiener, is there any chance that the little girl's body could have None. Done? She was cremated. Who is it? Alex, did you check the fingerprints? They're Mary's. Of course they are. Alex, look at the size of that wrist opening. Now, no human hand can be withdrawn from that opening without breaking the wax. You mind if I borrow this for a few hours? I'd like to examine it in the chemistry lab. I think I'll go with you. I'd like a little ride. Of course. He's not the kind of man who usually goes joyriding. I wonder if he's guessed we're into this. Most of these scientists have done enough government work to be pretty sophisticated about bugging. And lots of them hate even the word security. Thirty University Place, please. I should have planted a bug taxi in front of that house. I had to get out of the house. Also, Alex, I needed to speak to someone terribly. Do you accept what I'm about to say as a solemn confidence? Yes, sir, of course. Let's assume for a moment, just for a moment, that Mary's appearances are what they purport to be. It then follows that what she says is true, right? Well, we don't have any reason to believe that the dead are any smarter than the living. Yes, we do. Because for Mary to come back, it had to be with the approval and the permission of God. Well, that's an assumption, too. It's an assumption I feel I must make. If, in the work I've been doing, I've somehow undone the balance of power between East and West, 
I'd become the instrument to unleash war on the world, in which case I'd be duty-bound to... to... to redress the balance of power by defecting? Turn left the next corner, let me out. Alex, do you mind if I get out here? I'd like to walk, which is to say, think. Tomorrow morning at 6 o'clock, I'm going to leave my house. Get into a cab and take the early plane to Canada, then Europe. I can think more freely there. Well, listen, there's not that much of a hurry. I know when we're strung out about decisions that we want to get the agony over as soon as possible. Every day that Mary's presence is denied me is precious to me. And I feel she wants me to hurry. I tell my wife, when well, she's in such a nervous condition, I don't think she'll be able to keep the secret. So I ask you to state my case fairly to Lenore and Frank Ferguson. There are some who will at least listen. Be the best advocate you can. And don't forget, you've accepted a solemn obligation. I won't forget. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. you have the physics department run this piece of wax through their spectroscope first thing in the morning? Of course. Alex, what do you think they'll find? It's ordinary artist wax with a low melting point and very little pigment, but it's worth a try. Why don't you go to bed now? Why don't you? Yeah, I know. Rock me, too. More than rock me, Alex. I was married for 30 years. When my wife died, well, if I thought I could speak to her somehow, once again, Alex, I'm praying that this is all true. So don't count on me for objectivity. Well, why don't you go to bed anyway? I promise you I'll give you a ring if there's any breakthrough. Come. But I'm in your way, dithering at you. I'll go to my office and try to work. See you in the morning. <laughs> I'll see you later tonight.
and says, stop biting your nails. No, no, it was nothing like that. There was no tinny echoing effect, nothing. Alex, I miss you so. Come to me soon up here, Alex. Years ago, people who'd never seen a movie were real carried away seeing a picture like that. Of course, you had to conceal the projector and keep changing the focus. You'd be pretty good at throwing your voice. In the days of vaudeville, almost everybody in the show business knew some ventriloquism. You know, for a lot of people then, spiritualistic seances were a form of entertainment. So it was hanging. Folks used to think about dying and the afterlife a lot more than they do now. I have three phenomena. The voice, the appearance, and the hand. And I can't explain one of them. You're welcome to go through my library. There's something there about almost every illusion ever heard of. I've only got until 6 o'clock in the morning. What? I have until 6 o'clock to find out how these tricks have been done. If they are tricks. Or what? Is the world going to blow up or something? Thanks for opening up so late, Mr. Bush. Uh, doctor, let me say two things. First, where there's a spook, there's an operator. Don't doubt that. Second, you're going about this backwards. When you see a new illusion, don't try to figure out how it was done. That's a waste of time. Just start from zero and say, this is the illusion I want to create. Now, how will I go about it? Getting it off, it's tough, huh? Yeah, it's the getting it off that's tough. It's the size of the hand. It's who in that room could have done it, if anyone. Have a nice taxi ride with Professor Constable this evening. You come all the way up here just to ask me that? No telephone service here after 8 p.m. Thought he might have said something important. We had an okay taxi ride. Our lab expert tried greasing his hand, but the wax still broke like that. <laughs> You've been experimenting too, huh? We gave it a try. You're sure nothing we ought to know about that taxi ride? If you need me for anything, use this number. Thanks. I never make threats, neither does the department, so don't misunderstand this. If you have any friends in the law school here, ask them to define treason for you. It's a pretty broad definition. Sorry if we startled you, miss. No, that's okay. I'm looking for Dr. Louder. Do you know where he is? You'll find him in there. Alex! Steven Spider! Hi. What's up? Having a good time? I enjoy simple pleasures. I, uh, I had to talk to you, Alex, about tonight. Do you mind if I sit down? No, go right ahead. Now, Dr. Ferguson called the constables, and uh, I asked him where to find you. Well, what's on your mind, Tina? Well, tonight really got to me. Up until now, I guess I thought Professor Constable was... Uh, well, you know, going off the deep end. But then, seeing Mary hearing her. So I don't know what to believe. Alex, do you believe it's possible? Yes, I do. Unless I can prove otherwise. I see. What's all 
will the tape equipment for? I'm going to analyze the voices at the seance, compare them with Mary's voice. Very impressive looking. All part of my mad scientist kit. Look, Tina, I'm really kind of busy, if you don't mind. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't mean to just come... My hands are too large by quite a bit. Tina, did you notice anybody breaking the circle at the seance? On one side, I held Lenore's hand. She certainly didn't. On the other side was my father. Of course, I might be covering up for him. Oh, I wasn't talking about you. No, weren't you, Alex? Well, if the glove fits. Oh, I mean, if the shoe fits. I'm sorry I bothered you. Can identify? Uh, just movement around the house. What do you mean movement? Walking, drilling for oil? What do you mean movement? It's too far off Mike. It's footsteps. A soft sound. Like maybe something, something on a bed. It's a click. Metallic. Suitcase. Could that be it? Packing. Yeah, like like packing. Yeah, I said like packing. It may not be. All they have to do is get him to a so-called neutral country. And there it would be easy to make him disappear behind the Iron Curtain. All right, Stad. General, we hear sounds that might indicate he's packing. How about trying to get a warrant so we can move in? Can't do that. He hasn't broken any law. Might be going on a legitimate vacation or to a scientific congress or something. We'd have every scientist in the country down on our backs. Well, I thought maybe some judge might move on suspicion. Uh, we have the tapes of the seance. Just hard, sitting around here doing nothing. And the young spook expert's still our best bet. I'll be here. He says our best hope is still louder. So I guess I'd better go see how he's doing. Yes? Lenore, may I come in? Of course. I was on my way down to the kitchen when I saw your light. Did I catch you before you took your sleeping pill? Just. The norm, I've been debating all night whether to come in and talk to you or quietly depart in the morning, maybe leave you a note. Depart, Sam? For where? The norm, this astonishing communication from Mary, and to me, that's just what it is. There's been a great deal that I feel I cannot discuss with someone who doesn't believe. Now, although you are her mother, I feel that you're shutting Mary out when she needs our belief and our faith. Sam, there has to be another explanation. I know that's how you feel. I don't. I came to say this. I can't tell you all I'd like to tell you. 
but in all our years together. Lenore, please trust me. And believe that what I'm doing, I'm doing soberly and with love. With love, Sam? Love for... For you and for Mary and for all our fellow human beings, alive and dead. I'll be moving around a lot, traveling. I'll send you postcards. Sam. Good night, Lenore. Good night, Sam. Good night. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Stay tuned. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome back to Creature Features. If you're one of those late people, I, I, you know, I don't know why they bother to tune in at this time of night. But if you're one of those late people and have no idea what you're looking at, we are watching a movie with Pamela Ferdin, who is in the movie. And yeah, Pamela Ferdin, you, I, I think it would be easier to list all the movies you were not in <laughs> than it is to list all the movies you were in, right? And TV and shows. TV shows, right? commercials, and voiceovers. Commercials. We never talked about commercials. Oh, I did probably Stop. over 200 commercials. Oh, goodness. My goodness. And the voiceover we're going to talk about in a second. Yes. The most famous one. Yes. But quickly, this film, so this whole hand thing in the fishbowl, that frightened me as a child. It frightened me too. No, because I thought it was a real arm. It, and after the seance, after Mary is above everybody talking, right. and then she disappears and she leaves this hand in that bowl filled with water it was really scary no no it's quite scary because you you think she'd leave like a trout or something in a (laughs) fishbowl not an arm no we don't want trouts in fishbowls no we do not we do not (laughs) however a ghost trying to scare somebody might right Mm. all right wax arm a wax arm in the thing and you're saying that uh, during the break that was not your cast of that your, was not the cast the yeah. bust was but not right. the but not the hand but it the was hand looked too small it was scary right that right. was one of the most scariest part of the whole movie no it was disturbing because you don't see that too often in the in the 70s arms in fish bowls now 80s 90s you would see the old time right right but 70s first time so that was the first it was ahead of its time i think i think daughter of the mind was ahead of its time uh, no i think it was very much ahead of its time but let's talk about peanuts and I'm not talking about the, the nutritious snack. I'm talking about Charlie Brown and uh, Charles Schultz. Yes. You were the voice of Lucy. Good grief, Charlie Brown. She can still do it. <laughs> do it again. Good grief, Charlie Brown. Oh, my goodness. You know, they should, they should rehire you to keep doing it. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting because um, Charles Schultz said that I could have been doing Lucy when I was a teenager and a young adult because my voice was still right, the same. Right. But, um, but, you know, they had 30 little girls try out for the voice of Lucy, right. and I was one of them, and they sent all the recordings up to Santa Rosa. Which is close to here. Which is close to here, and Charles Schultz listened to them all, and he chose me, and 
he was just, he couldn't have been nicer. I met him one time when he came down to Hollywood when, when we were recording, and uh, he was just great. That's wonderful. You know, we, we had the uh, curator of the Charles Schultz Museum here. Oh. And uh, we, we got all kinds of stories, but that was one that they did not tell us about you. So when he was listening to all these recordings, did he have names? Did he like, no, oh, I saw her on Bewitched. <laughs> so I'm going to choose her. I, I think he was just sent all the recordings and he just listened to them all. And I really, uh, he, he chose me, he said. Right. One of the reasons was because I wasn't playing Lucy as just a straight brat. I mean, mean. Lucy. I didn't want to play Lucy right. as mean. She wasn't mean. She was bossy. Right. She was headstrong. Right. She was smart. And she would get very frustrated with Charlie Brown. Of course. But she wasn't mean. Right. And so I didn't I didn't play her as a as as a mean little girl. That's incredible. Um and of course she really loved Snoopy's kisses. Of course. She, she acted like she right. didn't like them, but she liked right. Snoopy's right. kisses. Right, right, That's wonderful. All right, well, what do you say we uh, wrap up this film? And then uh, when we come back, we're going to find out uh, how to learn more about Miss Pamela Ferdin and what you're doing next. That's right. All right, off we go to the end of uh, Daughter of the Mind. Don't go away when you see the credits roll, because we're going to come back, and it's going to be rude if you leave prior. <laughs> Thank you. a way to make a wax hand. Look, it may not be the way, but it is a way. I can make a wax hand, and I can etch the fingerprints onto the glove like this, see? And then someone could smuggle the glove into that seance, and then in the dark, blow it up, and dip it into the melted wax. Oh, no, wait a minute. There wasn't enough time to melt the wax. Now, how did they manage that apparition? And how could anybody get a dead girl's fingerprints? A dead, cremated girl. Oh, boy. I didn't realize how little I knew until I started to boast to you about it. Well, I've decided for bed. How about you? You don't have to solve the whole mystery tonight. If I don't, Professor Constable will... What? Constable will what? Frank, you're a real nice guy, but I wish you'd get out of here. Alex? Frank, please. All right. It's terrible to be old and discarded, but all right. See you tomorrow.
I'll wait here. Take him just far enough so he can find louder. brother's keeper. Goodbye. Please, don't forget me. Goodbye. 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 He was playing the recordings of Mary's voice. Getting too close. How will Professor Constable react? Won't killing louder make him realize... No, nothing will be suspected. It, it is a gas which evaporates in a couple of seconds. They'll think young intellectual, working too hard, heart attack. The Americans will probably blame it on vitamin deficiency. Or smoking. Anyway, Constable will be on a plane out of here in just a few hours. We won. the keys to the audiovisual supply room. Grady's off tonight. I'm just filling in. Has he got the flu again? I'm new here. And I don't have the keys. Okay. Thanks anyway. Try to kill me!
This brief moment of tranquility has been brought to you by Nightscape. Relax and sleep better every single night with this and other videos from our free YouTube channel. Learn more by visiting nightscape.co today. I guessed wrong.
your hands up. Put your hands up. Is a light projector? It, it projects a holograph, a three-dimensional picture. But that night on the road, Mary opened the car door. How? Just like, like the Czechoslovakian show La Terna Magica, where they mix film with live actors. We used a little girl made up to look like Mary. was smuggled into the country just for that one day. <laughs> size laser beam to project Mary's image and some remote control tapes for her voice. But they needed to distract us during the seance so they could materialize the wax hand. So they took some water vapor and they sprayed it in the room and projected Mary's image on it. Naturally, in the warm air of the room, the vapor tended to rise. And while we were looking up, I was photographing the ceiling. But the wax hand. I mean, in front of witnesses and in the dark. How could they make it so quickly and so perfectly? It wasn't. It had already been made, complete with Mary's fingerprints, which they'd obtained from her toys from this very room here. And it was smuggled into the room during the seance. You see, Dr. Kreider was surrounded on both sides by fellow conspirators. He had Bessmer on the right here and Tina on the left, so he was completely free to move about the room. And while we were looking up, he merely turned on the wax heater took the replica of Mary's hand and placed it in the water. When I turned on the lights, there it was. Tangible proof that Mary had returned from the dead. Somehow, the hardest thing for me is, is Tina. Someone living in your house, watching. I loved Tina. Really loved her. I think that's the worst, being made a fool of by someone you really cared for. She was very highly trained. Incidentally, no relation to Kreider. They were infiltrated into this country through Canada over ten years ago. What we call sleeper spies. So was the cab driver. They were being saved for some very important job. Like this one. Well, what about Bessman, his Hindu wife? We picked them up, but they haven't said anything. They were here on visitor's visas and were given clearances by British CID. Well, I asked you to find out how these phenomena were caused, and you did. Thank you. I wish... I know, I know. I had this room cleared out as you've always wanted. She was a wonderful child, Sam. Mr. Wiener, I want to thank you for... Sam, after seeing Mary in the seance, I felt I had to finish the bust while she was still so... so close to us. But I thought your hands were... Better. Just suddenly much better. The drier weather, I imagine. Yes, of course. Please. Don't forget me. Don't forget me. 
get me. And so ends Daughter of the Mind. Did you know that it was going to end like this? With secret agents? Yes. Because you, you read the script. I did. <laughs> yeah, sometimes they don't give you the entire script though, right? Sometimes they just give you your piece. No, actually, uh, I can't think of a time when they only gave me a piece of a script. I yeah, usually had the right, whole script, right. so um, I didn't understand it. I didn't of understand course. Because it had, like, political intrigue. Exactly. Right. It was, it, and so I didn't understand that, but... But you knew you were not a real ghost. I knew I was not a real ghost. So as you were acting as a ghost, you said, this is strange because I'm not a real ghost, according to the end of this film. I played myself as a ghost, as a real ghost. You did a wonderful job. I, f I really felt like I was yeah, a real ghost. Daddy thing. I, I, I'm going to have nightmares about that tonight. Oh, oh, the only thing I was missing was that childish piano ghost child music. You know, in all the ghost movies where they have children, there's that certain da 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 type music. Oh, yes, yes. That's the only thing it was missing. That's sad. All right, what are you up to? Well, uh, I have a website, PamelinFerdin.com. PamelinFerdin.com. I've been to this website. It's nice. Go check it out. And I have a Facebook page, and I post um, I post clips and I post pictures from the different shows I've done. Right. And so that's fun. And you recently did one from this film, right? I think it was a shot from the Observatory Griffith yep. Observatory yep. where you filmed this, right? So exciting things on her Facebook page, and then you just go to Facebook and search Pamela Ferdin, right? Yes. Right? And then okay. I uh, have written a memoir. You've written a memoir. And it's... Did you bring me a copy? <laughs> it's not published yet. That's why if you... You should let me proofread it. Oh, maybe I should. And I'll write an introduction. Well, if you or anybody else knows of a publisher that'll get yeah, my book out there, I love it. <laughs> we're we're going to start a new publishing, get, get Pamlin published. It really thing. is a good book. It, it starts when I was three years old. And just... It talks about all the different things I'd worked on and the actors from Bing Crosby to Jack Benny to Lucille Ball. We couldn't Ball. even cover all this in one show. You know, it's, I was telling her during the break, she needs to come back so we can cover like another 10% of your career in one episode of our show. I worked a mm -hmm. lot. I worked all the time I was working right. from age three to when I finally um, retired uh, at about 21. And you went on to do bigger and better things, though. Yes, I became an animal rights activist. That's good. Yes. No, animals have rights, too. They do. They do. And we're animals. We are. You're an animal. No, I, I'm quite the animal. <laughs> no, sometimes they won't let me back in the UK because they say, you're too much of an animal. <laughs> you're too much of an animal for the queen. You know, my mother is friends with the queen. Really? No, and she says, you cannot come back until you behave. <laughs> Because she's got to do the thing with Queen. So d doing the animal thing, are you part of a group? Do you own a group? Do well, you... I protested a lot um, about the cruelty inherent in circuses with animals. Yes. But they have now banned animals in circuses. So knock wood. That's just great. Just California, though, right? Right, just right, California. Right, we, need to, right. we need to get the other right. states to, to do it. Um, now, you know, and it's... It's, it's sad to see some poor animal be worked to death like that. You know, and then you go to like Cirque du Soleil that uses no animals. Right. They use people animals. And they're all happily fed and perfectly kept out of cages. And so I you... educate the public on uh, adopting a cat right. or a dog from a right. shelter instead right. of buying one. Right. Um, so I, I'm doing a lot of Both different things. Both noble causes. Right, no, good. We love our fluffy friends. As is Tangela, who lost a dog. Did you see her dog? No. Oh, he's running around here. It's, it's a crazy dog. It's, it's a little fluffy like poodle type thing with a vicious bite. And he likes tearing off the limbs of <laughs> Andrew, our sound man. But, uh, and, and I'm vegan. And you, as you should be. Yep. No, I'm I should vegan. be as well. She's working on making me, you know, she's vegan as well. Oh, great. Oh, she's, good for you. No, she's pure every vegan thing. 
Oh. She she won't even eat with a plastic fork <laughs> because there was some animal involved in that. So, all right. Thank you so much for coming on our show and coming all the way up to to watch this movie again. I, I hope it did not bore you. It was wonderful. The the honor was entirely ours. Next time you're up, I'm serious. You've got to come, and we're going to do another ten percent of your career, right? Okay, I will, because right. I have more to talk about. You have plenty to talk about. As far as you guys go, uh, come back next week, please. I I don't know who we're going to have as a guest. It'll, it'll be somebody fun, not as fun as Pamela, but um, maybe the movie will be better. No, the movie, <laughs> the movie will not be better either. So we will have a uh, another guest in another movie, but I cannot promise the quality of those as I could tonight. So we shall see you next week. Have a fun week. So uh, Pamela, you know, I know for a fact that they considered you in the role in The Exorcist and uh, they did not use you because you were too popular. Right. But I'm wondering, if they were to offer you a similar role today, would you take it? Good grief, Vincent.